Welcome back to another Endgame composition video, this time by Henrik Kasparian. It's White's turn to move and eventually win, and as usual, I'm going to invite you to pause the video right here and see if you can solve this puzzle on your own. But for those who just want to learn, let's get right into it. We can see that White is up one pawn, even though they got those double H pawns. But how can White convert this? Now at first glance, we see that White's A pawn has the best chance of promoting. So maybe this is the key to solving this composition. Now in my opinion, I think that the first move here is pretty obvious. It's knight to c3 to attack this bishop right here. Now the bishop only has one available square on c2. It can't go to e4 because playing white, I'm going to be more than happy to trade pieces here just so I could push that a pawn. Even if the black king is barely there in time to stop the promotion, this doesn't really concern white at all. The only thing that white needs to be careful of in this situation is making sure not to promote when the black king reaches b7. Instead, white needs to move the king up, which is quite the opposite of what you'd expect here. I say this because if white were to promote right now, then black captures, and now king to e3 would only result in a draw. The black king moves to b7, white to e4, black to c6, white captures the pawn, and then black moves to d7, white moves to f6, black to e8. And even if white captures black's last pawn, the game is still going to end in a draw, all because of white pawn being placed on the h-file. Now why does this matter so much? Well, it's because the h-pawn and the a-pawn are so different from all the others. In a standard scenario, the king can support their pawn from either the left or the right side. But in the case of the a and h-pawns, it's not possible due to them being on the edge of the board, meaning the king can only support them from one side. In our case, after black's king plays f8, white can no longer secure the promotion square h8. If they try to play h7, the enemy king is just going to box them in, and by playing an opposition, they wouldn't let them escape the h-file. But if white doesn't promote the pawn and instead moves the king up, now they have one tempo up and can arrive on g7 faster than the black king, thus creating a safe passage for their pawn to promote. So we see how bishop to c2 is the only move available. White pushes their pawn, and black plays bishop to b3 in response. Now if white pushes their pawn once more, bishop to c4 will fork the king and the pawn with a check. So I'll let you think here for a second and see if you could find the next brilliant move in this situation. Let me know in the comments if you were able to find it. So if you were thinking king to d3, trying to protect this c4 square, unfortunately that's not the correct move because black can simply reroute their bishop and attack on the a8 square instead of a6 by playing bishop to e6. White pawn moves to a6, bishop to d7, pawn to a7, black bishop to c6, and here, white needs to find a way to remove that bishop from the diagonal. Also, black's pawn to e4 is now a threat. So if white tries to defend that square with the knight, black wouldn't fall into the trap of capturing it. Instead, they would play the black king to f4, preparing to promote their pawn. And we can now see how white is in quite a bit of trouble here. Now, even if they manage to capture black's bishop on a8, white's knight will be way too far away to defend their own pawns, so the game is once again going to end in a draw. Black pawn moves to e4, check. King to e2. Black king to g3. Now black going after white's remaining pawns. White promotes, takes, takes, and now black is going to collect white's remaining pawns. King to e3 is more or less the same idea, with black rerouting that bishop. And in this position, surprisingly, the best move is actually to push the pawn. But is white crazy to play that move? To willingly give away his pawn with a check? Well, let me tell you, yes, white is crazy here. Crazy genius. Because if black would capture the pawn, we would see the most beautiful Zugzwang position ever in all of chess history. So, pawn moves to a6. Bishop to c4, check. King to e3. Black captures, and now, can you see the next move that's about to come up? I'll give you four or five seconds to think about it. 
The brilliant move here, whether you guys figured it out or not, is knight to e4. And here, black can just resign the game. Now, why is this the most beautiful Zugzwang in chess history? Because the black bishop, even with its long range of moves, doesn't have a single safe square to move to. Bishop to b7, knight to d6, forking both the king and the bishop with a check. Bishop to c8, the same fork with knight to d6. Bishop to b5, you guessed it, knight to d6 with the fork. Bishop to c4, dead again. Bishop to f1, knight to g3 with a fork. There are seven possible moves for that black bishop, and not a single one of them are safe. So, it's quite a move from white, if you ask me. Now, even if black tries to keep his bishop by not moving it, in this position, he's only got two other legal moves. King to e6, which, yet again, is going to fall into a knight c5 fork, and pawn to g5. So, do you still think white was crazy by playing a6? Have you ever seen a more beautiful Zugzwang position than this? But wait, the puzzle doesn't end here. Now, our tenacious opponent doesn't know when to give up and he plays pawn to g5. Now, can you win from this position as white? Well, if your next move is pawn takes pawn, thinking to undouble the pawns and afterwards promote one of them, you just unfortunately drew the game and wasted that beautiful Zugzwang. Now, why is that? Because that pawn take creates an opening for a whole new world of counterplay for black. Right now, black does not care about losing that bishop and moves it to b7, attacking the knight. And after the knight check on d6, black is going to capture this g-pawn. Now, no matter what white plays, he's going to lose that second pawn as well. See how white king can't go to f3, which is the only square that would have saved the pawn because of the bishop on b7? So, knight takes, black king moves to h4, the white king moves to e4, takes, takes, and it's a draw. Even if the knight decided to go to g3 instead, this would have still had the same end result. Now instead, if you were thinking about maybe capturing this pawn with your knight, well congratulations, you just drew the game once more. Now, the black bishop can freely move without being captured. Bishop moves to f1, attacking the h3 pawn, forcing the knight to defend it. White king moves to f2, attacking the bishop. The black bishop moves to c4, knight to f3, black king to f4. White pawn moves to h5, and then the black pawn moves to e4. And the game would continue with multiple scenarios, all of them ending in a draw. So here's a quick example of one of them. Make sense? Now, if you had played pawn to h5, then you are truly worthy of being a subscriber to Chess Crafters, and I am very proud of you for it. Now, this is the actual winning move. Black is once again in a Zugzwang due to the pawn protecting the g6 square, not allowing the king to get in there. Now, if black tries to push the pawn, white is simply going to capture it, and black has no way to stop the h pawn from promoting anymore. Okay, so... If he tries to move his bishop, let's say bishop to c8, then knight to d6, check. The black king moves to f6, knight captures, black king moves to g7, and here white needs to be very careful not to fall for black's final trick. Now can you spot it? Remember how I said in previous videos that sometimes the obvious move is usually not the best one? Now in this position, if white had played the natural move, king to e4, this would allow black to draw the game. How? Let me show you. Black king moves to h6. White captures. Black captures. White king to f5. Black king to h4. And white will lose his pawn the next turn. In this position, white has multiple ways of converting this. The only drawing move was king to e4. So I sincerely hope you didn't make that blunder. Now let's see a quick example with king to f3. The black king moves to h6, king to g4, protecting this pawn. Now even if black pushes his e pawn, the knight is going to get there in time to stop it from promoting with another beautiful fork. So the black pawn moves to e3, and then knight to f5. 
black king to h7, and even if the enemy king is very near the h8 square, white can promote his pawns because now he's got his knight there to help kick the king out. I really hope you enjoyed this endgame, and I hope you were just as amazed by that beautiful Zugzwang as I was. Take care, and see you in the next one.